Today, we will be discussing the Selma to Montgomery marches that took place in 1965. The marches aimed to secure voting rights for black citizens in Alabama after state-imposed restrictions. The marches were met with violence and resistance from state and local officials, white citizens' council, and the Ku Klux Klan. We will explore the events leading up to these marches, the resistance they faced, and the impact they had on the civil rights movement. At the turn of the 20th century, the state legislature in Alabama passed a new constitution that prevented most black citizens from voting by imposing a poll tax, literacy test, and comprehension of the constitution, which was enforced subjectively by white registrars. Selma, a major town in the Alabama Black Belt with a majority black population, had only 130 registered black voters out of 15,000 who were eligible to vote. The Dallas County Voters League tried to register African-American citizens in the 1950s and 60s, but their efforts were blocked by state and local officials, the White Citizens Council, and the Ku Klux Klan. In 1963, organizers from the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee arrived in Selma to begin a voter registration project, which was met with arrests, beatings, and death threats. On October 7, 1963, during a Freedom Day, over 300 African Americans lined up at the voter registration office, but only a handful were allowed to fill out applications. Despite the passage of the Civil Rights Act in 1964, some Jim Crow laws and customs remained in effect in Selma, and efforts to integrate eating and entertainment venues were met with violence and arrests. In 1964, civil rights activist Frederick Douglass Reese sought help from Martin Luther King Jr. and the Southern Christian Leadership Conference after civil rights activity was blocked by Judge James Hare's injunction in Selma, Alabama. Although Reese was the president of the Dallas County Voters League, the SCLC was invited to Selma by a group of local activists known as the Courageous Eight. Three of SCLC's main organizers, James Bevel, Diane Nash, and James Orange, had already been working on the Alabama Voting Rights Project since late 1963, but King and the executive board of SCLC had not yet joined them. When SCLC finally accepted the invitation, they began working in Selma in December 1964. However, tensions between SCLC and the SNCC were growing, and SNCC members were becoming distrustful of SCLC's mobilizations, which they believed did not result in major improvements for African Americans. Selma had both moderate and hardline segregationists in its white power structure, including the newly elected Mayor Joseph Smitherman and Dallas County Sheriff Jim Clark, who used violence and repression to maintain Jim Crow. The Selma voting rights campaign began on January 2, 1965, when Martin Luther King Jr. addressed a meeting in Brown Chapel AME Church in Selma, Alabama. The campaign aimed to expand voter registration drives and protests in Selma and adjacent Black Belt counties, where African American residents were prevented from voting due to racist laws and practices. The first big event of the campaign occurred on January 18th, when Black registrants attempted to enter the county courthouse but were prevented by Sheriff Clark. Over the next week, African Americans persisted in their attempts to register, resulting in the arrest of organizers and 225 registrants. On January 22nd, Frederick Reese convinced his colleagues at the Dallas County Voters League to join the campaign and register en masse. When they refused to disperse at the courthouse, an ugly scene commenced, and Sheriff Clark beat Annie Lee Cooper repeatedly with his club, leading to a media sensation that put the campaign on the front page of the New York Times. Despite some disagreements over tactics, the movement rallied around Cooper, who had violated nonviolent discipline by punching Clark, but continued to fight for voting rights. In February 1965, the Selma voting rights campaign intensified as activists tried to register more African-American voters. The campaign involved numerous protests, sit-ins, and acts of civil disobedience, resulting in thousands of arrests and injuries. The campaign attracted national attention, and activists sought publicity to raise awareness about their cause. On February 1st, 
Dr. King and Ralph Abernathy intentionally got arrested by refusing to cooperate with the traffic directions of Chief Baker, hoping to be put in the Selma City Jail, which was under Baker's police, rather than the county jail, which was run by Clark's deputies. SCLC and SNCC organizers expanded the campaign beyond Dallas County, and solidarity pickets were held in front of the White House late into the night. President Lyndon Johnson issued his first public statement in support of the Selma campaign, and Judge Thomas suspended Alabama's current literacy test in response to the campaign's actions. However, the number of registered African American voters in Selma was still very low compared to the number of registered white voters by the end of February. The SCLC's protests faced criticism from some DCLV activists who preferred to wait and see if Judge Thomas's ruling would make a long-term difference. In 1965, C.T. Vivian led a protest march in Marion, Alabama against the arrest of James Orange. State troopers attacked the protesters, and in the chaos, Jimmy Lee Jackson was shot and later died. Jackson was the sole breadwinner for his impoverished family. James Bevel called for a march from Selma to Montgomery after the death of Jimmy Lee Jackson to focus the anger and pain of the people towards a nonviolent goal. Dr. King agreed, and they both intended to symbolize a march for full voting rights. SNCC had reservations about the march, but permitted John Lewis to participate. Governor Wallace denounced the march as a threat to public safety and ordered the Alabama Highway Patrol to use whatever measures necessary to prevent it. On March 7, 1965, civil rights activists started a march from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama, to demand voting rights for African Americans. When they crossed the Edmund Pettus Bridge, they were met by a wall of state troopers and county posse who attacked the protesters with nightsticks and tear gas. Televised images of the attack shocked Americans and the international community, prompting increased support for the Selma voting rights campaign. 17 marchers were hospitalized and 50 treated for injuries, with the day becoming known as Bloody Sunday within the black community. The attack left John Lewis with a skull fracture and lifelong scars. The photograph of Amelia Boynton lying unconscious on the road appeared in newspapers around the world, drawing further attention to the struggle for voting rights in America. President Johnson issued a statement denouncing the violence and promising to send a voting rights bill to Congress. SNCC joined the Selma campaign and organized sit-ins in Washington, D.C. Labor leader Walter Ruther urged President Johnson to take immediate action to protect constitutional rights, including the use of federal marshals and troops if necessary. Following the brutal events of Bloody Sunday, the SCLC organized a second march for Tuesday, March 9, 1965. Despite attempts to gain a court order preventing police interference, a restraining order was issued, delaying the march until additional hearings could be held. While some in the movement were confident the order would eventually be lifted, others were determined to march. Assistant Attorney General John Doerr and former Florida Governor Leroy Collins urged Dr. King to postpone the march, but King felt it was his moral duty to proceed. Collins suggested a plan for a symbolic witness on the Edmund Pettus Bridge, which King agreed to follow as long as law enforcement didn't attack them. On Turnaround Tuesday, King led 2,500 marchers to the bridge, where they held a short prayer session before turning back. The plan was only known to SCLC leaders, causing confusion among many marchers who had traveled long distances. Three white ministers were attacked and beaten by KKK members that evening, and one, Reverend James Reeb, died from his injuries. James Reeb's death provoked widespread mourning and vigils across the country. President Johnson expressed condolences to Reeb's family and later invoked his memory while presenting a draft of the Voting Rights Act to Congress. Some activists were bitter that the media and national political leaders had paid scant attention to the murder of Jimmy Lee Jackson. The credibility of Dr. King in the movement was shaken by the secret turnaround agreement. Criticism of King by radicals in the movement became increasingly pronounced, with one calling Turnaround Tuesday a classic example of trickery against the people. A memorial service was held for James Reeb, attended by Dr. King and others.
Attendees then marched to the Dallas County Courthouse. After the second march to Montgomery was halted, Tuskegee Institute students and SNCC led several hundred demonstrators to the Alabama State Capitol to deliver a petition to Governor Wallace. The SNCC distrusted King and began a series of demonstrations in Montgomery, which led to a conflict with SCLC and the arrest of James Bevel and James Foreman. Some protesters threw bricks and bottles at police, and a mass meeting was held demanding protection for demonstrators. The Montgomery County Sheriff and his deputies met the protesters and whipped them, but city officials apologized for the assault and agreed to stop using the law enforcement against protesters, issuing march permits to African Americans for the first time. Governor Wallace, however, continued to arrest demonstrators. In March 1965, protests continued across America. Tuskegee Institute students led a march to the Alabama State Capitol to deliver a petition to Governor Wallace. SNCC began a series of demonstrations in Montgomery and put out a national call for others to join them. On March 11th, seven Selma Solidarity activists were arrested for sitting in at the East Wing of the White House. SNCC and other groups continued to organize protests in more than 80 cities, and Attorney General Katzenbach announced the federal government's intention to prosecute officials responsible for the attacks on marchers. On March 15th, President Johnson presented his new voting rights bill to a joint session of Congress, demanding that they pass it. In his historic presentation, Johnson praised the courage of African-American activists and called Selma a turning point in man's unending search for freedom. Afterward, King sent a telegram to Johnson congratulating him for his speech. Johnson's voting rights bill was formally introduced in Congress two days later. On March 17, 1965, a week after the death of Jimmy Lee Jackson, Judge Frank Johnson ruled in favor of the protesters, stating that their First Amendment right to march in protest could not be abridged by the state of Alabama. However, President Johnson had avoided giving an ironclad commitment of enforcement until he received assurances from Governor Wallace. On March 20th, the president federalized the Alabama National Guard to escort the march from Selma, which was supervised by Deputy U.S. Attorney General Ramsey Clark. On March 21st, around 8,000 people, including leaders of multiple races, religions, and creeds, gathered at Brown Chapel AME Church to commence the trek to Montgomery. The march was limited to 300 participants for the two days they were on the two-lane portion of Highway 80 under the terms of Judge Johnson's order. On March 22nd and 23rd, 300 protesters marched across Lowndes County in chilling rain, wearing kippo to emulate the marching rabbis. On March 24th, the march crossed into Montgomery County, and thousands of marchers reached the final campsite at the city of St. Jude. That night, a Stars for Freedom rally was held, with famous singers performing, and thousands more people continued to join the march. 25,000 people marched to the state capitol building on March 25th, where Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his famous speech, How Long, Not Long. However, they were met by state troopers blocking the entrance, and on the same night, Viola Liuzzo, a white supporter of voting rights for African Americans, was killed by the Ku Klux Klan while driving marchers back to Selma. The third Selma march was successful in publicizing the message without police harassment. It gained more civil rights support and led to voter registration drives. In 1965, Martin Luther King Jr. promoted an economic boycott of Alabama products to pressure the state to integrate schools and employment. The SNCC and the SCLC called for a national boycott of hammer mill paper products until the company reversed what SNCC described as racist policies. After protests at Hammer Mill's Erie, Pennsylvania headquarters, the company signed an agreement to support integration in Alabama and commit to equal pay for black and white workers. Around 50 police officers arrived outside of the Erie headquarters and arrested 65 activists, charging them with obstruction of an officer. The marches from Selma to Montgomery in Alabama in 1965 had a significant impact on the civil rights movement in the United States.
President Lyndon Johnson introduced a bill to Congress after the marches, which was passed in the summer and signed by the President in August 1965 as the Voting Rights Act. Johnson's televised speech before Congress was considered a watershed moment for the civil rights movement. While many in the movement cheered the speech, others were skeptical of the White House, believing that Johnson was not a reliable supporter of their cause. The Voting Rights Act prohibited most of the unfair practices used to prevent African Americans from registering to vote and provided for federal registrars to go to Alabama and other states with a history of voting-related discrimination to ensure that the law was implemented. In the early years of the act, progress was slow, with local registrars continuing to use their power to deny African Americans voting access. By March 1966, nearly 11,000 African Americans had registered to vote in Selma, and more African Americans would register by November, when their goal was to replace County Sheriff Jim Clark. Did you or any of your family participate in the Civil Rights Movement? Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear what you have to say. Please consider giving this video a like if you liked it. That really helps with the algorithm. Additionally, consider subscribing to the channel for more true crime. Till next time, signing off, this has been Christina.